Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and I welcome you back in LandGraph Advanced Series. We continue our topic with tools and today I will show you how you can force your agent, your model LLM, to use tools and to ask questions, so-called human in the loop, when the agent thinks it has some questions. So join me and let's take a look at that together. And traditionally, before we dive in, I wanted to mention that this video is supervised by Angry Cats. It's really extremely highly supervised. So you should take a look at those and the link is in the description. So check the merge. And we continue. All right, as promised, we are looking at dynamic human in the loop cycle uh, driven by your agent. And before we dive in, I wanted to refresh your memory a bit and take a look at the agent we created in the lesson number four. And the link you will find in the description to this video as well, so you can refresh your memory even as the video itself. But generally, uh, the idea of that video, number four, was that we have an agent, a React, so a reasoning acting agent, and that one had some tools, and we considered some tools to be risky. And for those, we introduce human in the loop where the agent, uh, if agent tries to execute the tool, then it was uh, interruption process. And basically, we required user to approve the tool. And those time I told you, I showed you the technique that uh, we can use the uh, post-model hook for that. And this is the way how agent looked like those time. So in general, we had a reasoning node, agent, mode, uh, model, LLM, right? And we have tools. And what was happening in the post-model hook, we were checking if the agent is trying to execute a specific tool, which we considered as being risky. We stopped here, we interrupted the process and asked user to approve the tool execution. So that was the uh, whole idea we implemented last time. And if you think about that, uh, this is one example of a uh, React agent uh, reacting on something where the user interruption needed. Another use case could be if you create a flow and then a specific step you want to stop the execution and ask user for providing feedback, for approving something, etc. So uh, what do those cases have in common? And the answer is pretty clear. It's hard-coded, right? So we define specific places, points in our graph where the execution should be or potentially can be stopped and user can interrupt them. And if you think about that uh, in, in the way how the React, Reason Act in Agent works in general, this is kind of a uh, really wrong situation, right? Because we don't want the agent to have some hard-coded places where a human can interrupt, right? We want the agent to be agile, to be flexible enough to decide on its own when to stop and what questions to ask. So this is the idea of uh, our today's lesson. And in general, let's, uh, I'm not gonna run this agent. Let's start from the same thing, but just uh, without any post-model hook. And again, this post-model hook was a halt on risky tools. And this was the place where we interrupted the execution. But let's start from the very simple uh, plain React, kind of plain, right? But it's not so plain, not so simple, but uh, it looks like. I'm just repeating the same agent, but I don't have any post-model hooks. So it's a pretty clear view, it's this one. And um, it has, it's the same, this financial agent, it has a lookup stock symbol. It has uh, fetch stock data row, place order. I'm just trying to settle the example uh, that we can, uh, that we can check that our changes uh, accepted and work as expected. And having this agent, I can ask some financial questions. And in the previously, in the past lessons, I was always asking to buy 1,000 of Tesla stock at current price. So what do we have? And nothing is really new here. I have a user request asking for spending 1,000. Then it was a tool call for lookup stop symbol for Tesla. And we have back TSLA. And then another tool call for fetch stock data for TSLA. And we do have a lot of like huge amount of data generated back. And then based on that, uh, it was a place order. And based on the current price, uh, it's uh, 435. Uh, we know that, okay, for 1,000, we uh, model decided that two shares can be bought here. 
and order was fulfilled and the, finally I messaged saying that, okay, uh, now I have two shares of Tesla company. Everything is fine here, but uh, let's try and change this example a bit so it's not so clear. Like uh, here I'm saying buy some Tesla stocks at current price. So it's not clear how many I have, right? And let's see what will happen with this new user request. All right, and everything started with a positive attitude here. Kind of everything is the same as previously. I have the user request, uh, lookup stock symbol, TSLA back, and fetch stock data for TSLA and a lot of data again, like uh, no differences from the previous call, right? But, 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 look at that. The current price of Tesla, uh, we get back the message directly and that's it. And it says that this is the current price of Tesla and to proceed, the model doesn't know how many shares I would like to buy. So I have to provide some additional information. It's kind of already human in the loop, you can call it this way, right? But it's not. So this is the problem, right? The agent doesn't know how to proceed because some crucial part of information is missing, like how many stock shares I want, I really know how many uh, shares, how much money I have, all this kind of information is missing, so it's not possible to proceed. And this is the good example why and how we should add something to the agent so to allow it to stop the execution and ask these additional questions. And let me scroll back to the agent schema again. So what do we have here? How can we inject this piece of uh, functionality? And this is reasoning acting agent, react so-called. And basically you have two different parts, two main parts which it consists of. So it's the agent is a reasoning part, it's a model LLM and it's responsible for making a decision. And then you have tools and this kind of helpers that can obtain, perform some actions, obtain some information from somewhere, from internet, from other systems. And an agent uses this information that was obtained by tool to reason and possibly fulfill the user request. So there is no way how you can introduce something else extra along, right? And if you think about that, that the only way you can add these questions is uh, it seems, okay, it's tools, right? You have to add another tool. For example, we can call it a question tool. And when agent feels that, okay, I'm missing some information, then the agent can call this tool and the tool will be responsible for processing this human in the loop cycle, like interrupted it, gets uh, some result from the user and sends it back to the agent. So this is the raw idea. You can introduce a new tool which will be responsible for doing this human in the loop. And then the whole schema stays the same and it's very uh, beautifully simplifying way, right? Okay, going back and let's try to implement this tool. So what should we do? It's very simple. We introduce a new tool and I name it ask question and there is a question parameter, is a string and response back. And then we provide some description for this tool so the agent, the model, is aware when to use that. And the most important parts here are ask a human a question and waits for their response. And this is human in the loop and uh, then parameters. We ask it for a question, the question to ask the human so we ask it to be specific and clear for the model and then the human's response goes back as a return of this function. And we're also providing some examples. So this is it. And about the body, it's pretty simple, straightforward. This is our just example tool. So it can, we can, we can afford us to, be, to make it very simple, right? We are interrupting the process the normal way. We are interrupting human in the loop these uh, times. We are providing an object that will be shown to the user and this is a question. And then we get back some response from the user and we are returning user's response. And again, when we are just returning an object here, it's not a common object, it's just a JSON uh, dictionary, then as a result, there a tool message will be created with this content and this tool message will be sent to the message queue, allowing the agent to grab the response and persist, process it and proceed. All right, nothing is really uh, overcomplicated here, right? And then we are recreating our React agent. And again, we have the same system message. We have chip pointer for memory saver. 
And again, just to refresh your memory, we do, ne uh, we do need it because uh, we are going to interrupt the graph and resume it. And for that, we need to have uh, check pointers saved in our short-term memory. And we are providing the same set of tools. So lookup, stock symbol, fetch, stock data row, place order. And additionally, we put in here this ask question tool. And then voila, we have the same React agent, very simple one, but now we know that uh, this uh, toolbox, set of tools, contains a new ask question. And again, let's give it a try and run the same question by some Tesla stocks. So it's not clear what is some, it could be one, two, three, five, I don't know. And the same positive start we have, so there's a request, look up for stock symbol, TSLA, Tesla to TSLA, uh, fetch stock row data. We get back a bunch of data again from a tool. And look at that. We have another tool called uh, with the ask question name and the argument is a question. So there is a question, how many shares of Tesla TSLA would you like to buy at the current price of 435? So, and the whole process seems interrupted. We don't see the final AI uh, response to our request, right? We can double check it. It says true, so we have an interruption object here. And again, uh, this is the list of messages, but in your code, you can fetch this specific object. Like here, I have it in a question and how many shares of Tesla. And uh, again, this is the same technique, just we have to, again, invoke the agent with providing the command to resume. And as a resume content, we are saying, okay, I want to invest 1,000 maximum. So again, even the answer is different, right? So it's asking for how many shares I would like to buy. And I'm replying, okay, I have 1,000. Please spend everything you can, right? And we're providing the same config. So uh, this is the same thread. That's why we had the check pointers. And we are just resuming our agent from the place it stopped, providing additional information as a human in the loop feedback cycle. And let's take a look how it proceeds. And here we are. Let's check the output. Uh, this is from the previous session. Uh, we asked for TSLA raw data. Then it was a human loop interruption with the question. This one, how many shares? And this is my response. I want to invest 1000. And based on that, okay, now the information is enough to process the user request and the model calculated that, okay, based on the current price and the maximum, two shares can be bought here. And then an order was placed, which was fulfilled as well as a tool message back. And then we have the final response from AI that in order, the order to buy two shares of Tesla at the limit price uh, was executed and the total spend was 871. All right. But again, just uh, feel the beauty of this solution. This is dynamically created uh, tool. And so your agent can decide on its own when it needs some information. It can just interrupt the process and ask it. It adds a lot of flexibility to what you're creating. All right, this is it for the video. I hope you found something useful. You saw on your own eyes some hints, tricks, how you can use, how you can force your agent to ask additional questions if agent thinks it needs to know something extra. And it was me, Evgeny. Uh, thanks a lot for watching till the end. And I think next time we will check how you can uh, wrap all your different functions in a kind of uh, human in a loop cycle. Take care. Bye-bye.